everybody welcome to my channel and thank you for joining now in today's episode we're going to go through our team changes and we're also going to talk about the buy rounds okay the dreaded buy rounds uh i'm gonna show you how you can go from rank and let's say uh, two thousand or three thousand even ten thousand let's say from ten thousand up to one thousand in four weeks okay it's the buy round just coming down okay now our aim uh is to go into the top 50 uh from from our rank what we got now 180 to top 50 in the next four weeks uh this is the t this, this is the cheating time this is where uh, teams that have prepared or are preparing for the buy rounds can just fly and uh, and cheat their way into the top uh, higher rankings so uh, I'm going to show you how to cheat today. Now, this is our current team uh, before any trades, all right? Now, I'm going to do a little chart, and I'm going to show you what you need. Um, now, maybe I should have done this chart earlier <laughs> before you picked all your players, okay? But it doesn't matter, okay? Whatever your rank now, we're going to put you right up the order. Now, what you need uh, for, this to, for this to work, what you need is only two rookies, okay? to make this happen you don't need to have a whole bench full of rookies um we are under the impression okay uh that you need uh, all the rookies to be playing uh that's not true i'm going to show you why uh two rookies is enough now i've got the little notepad out okay now the only thing that's going to ruin this plan is bad luck and uh if we can avoid bad luck uh we're gonna we're gonna be flying okay now uh, every year I've planned these buy rounds, uh, had them perfectly planned, and bad luck struck, okay, and um, everything got ruined. Uh, I've been practicing many theories over the years, and um, my first theory was, uh, this is going back about four years ago, was to, um, to have a lot of buy round players in your first buy round. So let's say a lot of primos missing in your first buy round cover that round and then the rest of your buy rounds you'll be flying that was my first plan okay uh that didn't work okay it, didn't, it was no good so that plan so then i tried different plans until i perfected it okay now this is the plan for the buy round to fly now keep in mind i've never ever flown in a buy round because uh, every time i want to fly uh let's say a, a day cost gets suspended and a martin gets injured uh, followed by another bond getting injured so someone gets injured or suspended okay so if we can avoid the bad luck with the primos and just make sure all the primos stay on the park uh then then we're gonna fly all right now here's what we need now if you can recall at the start of the year i, I did a little um uh, no, got no pad out and i said to you okay in round 12 we want to have um let's put the uh restricts here round 12 we want to have 20 primos, okay? Uh, I went through this. I was happy with 19, but 20 is a better number, all right? Uh, round 13, we needed 21 primos, okay? Uh, and round 14, uh, we want 22 primos. Now, uh, the reason for this is because uh, by having extra primos, we eliminate having the rookies on the field, all right? Now, uh, let's go to our buy rounds. What do we need for the buy rounds now? Which, how many primos do we need per each buy round that are missing? Okay, now let, let's work this out, okay? So, I'm going to put a little note here. Missing. Actually, I can put here also round 15, all right? I can make a little note, 23 primos, okay? That's if we got cash, okay? So that's that's questionable, the 23 primos, all right? Now, missing from our team, all right, in round 12. All right, how many primos can we have missing? Well, my number is four. Okay, four primos missing. So that equals, uh, if we have 20 primos and we've got four missing, that means we have 16 primos on fields, okay? 16 uh, just say P on fields, okay, which means two rookies. So that's not too bad. So all you need is two playing rookies here, all right? Uh, I mean, the more the merrier, okay? You could play around with them, and that could sort of get the highest score, but you only need two of them, 
All right. In round 13, all right, how many primos can you have missing? Because in round 13, we're going to have 21 primos. So if you've got four primos missing in round 13, that means you're going to have 17 primos on field, okay? Uh, that's that's not bad, okay? Just come it down! Okay, 17. So you need one one rookie on field. So that, that's not a big problem, all right? I'm sure you'll find one rookie to play. Now, in round 14, all right, round 14, how many primos can we have missing in round 14? Well, the answer is seven. Okay, now you're going to say, why watch so many? Okay, now we're going to have seven primos missing in round 14. Now, in round 14, we have 22 primos, which means we have 15 primos, 15 primos on field, okay? Uh, however, with round 14, we're also going to sideways two of the primos, okay? So we're actually going to have we're going to have 17 primos on field. Or you can say always one of them. You're going to have 16 or 17, okay? So, seven, I have to go here, okay? 16 to 17 primos if you sideways one or two. And when I say sideways, okay, uh, it doesn't mean uh, you're going to sideways, you're going to take out your best player, okay? You can only sideways the spuds, okay? For example, round 14. Let's go round 14. Who's not performing in round 14 now? Actually, that's is that 14. That's 14. So in round 14, who's let you down? All right? We go through them. Maybe Nick Martin's let us down. All right? Maybe he had a role change. Let us down. Trade him out. Okay? Um, McGovern, if he's starring, you don't trade him out. If Walsh, Rao, I mean, Oliver, uh, Flanders are all starring, you don't trade them out. You keep them. You only trade them out if they're not performing. Okay, so that's for round 14. Uh, so the idea is to have the best possible team. And if you've got a Nick Martin playing, let's say, forward, you don't have the best team anyway. So you might as well hold him till his buy round and then trade him out, okay, and, um, and bring in a better player. Because you want to go with the run home with the best possible team. That's the idea. Because uh, so, you're not going to win Super Coach if Nick Martin's playing forward. You're going to win Super Coach if Nick Martin is playing in defense and hogging the ball. Okay, so uh, we need the best. We need the best of the best on the run home. So in round fourteen, we need seven primos missing. All right. Now in round fifteen, how many do we need? Okay, round fifteen. All right, round fifteen. The answer is seven again. Okay, seven primos in round fifteen, and. I don't even have seven primos in round 15. Now, so round 15, if you've got seven missing, you've got 23 primos, you're going to have 16 on fields. And if you sideways trade one or two of them, you can have up to 18 primos on fields. So you actually don't need the rookies, okay? Uh, it's just a matter of planning the first part. Now, let's have a look at our plan. How's it working? Now, round 12, how many primos do we have missing? We have Sheezles, we have Green, that's two. Uh, we have Heaney, that's three. We have Fisher, that's four. And we have Powell. Uh, mind you, Powell's on a primo, but uh, just say four, because Powell's on a primo. So we have four missing in uh, in round f in round 12, okay? And that's perfect. So that means we're going to have 16 on field uh, primos, which means we're going to have two rookies. Now, the rookies aren't going to be Wilson or Powell on field, unfortunately, because um, uh, I'm going to trade them out, okay? Uh, I'm going to have rookies like Garcia and uh, well, and then whoever, I who else, whoever else I bring in now. So they're not going to be the best of the best rookies. Maybe Harley Reid might, or Zach Reid might be one of the rookies. Maybe Graham or Garcia if they're playing. So Klossy will be traded out. So th they're not going to be the best rookies on field. Actually, another one, uh, Conway, will be one of the rookies. Now, so, uh, what happens in round 13, okay? How many rookies are we missing in round 13? Let's count. Round 13, how many did we need for starters? We needed four to have 17 primos on field because you got 21. Well, we got two only missing at the moment. So I can actually bring in another one. Okay, I can have three. If I have three... Uh, There'll be 21 primos. I'll have 18 primos on field with three of them. So I might as well have three. Have all eight, 
what a full eight, at least of 18 primers on fields, plus a couple of rookies. So for my team now, what I need to do is bring in around 13 by player uh, as as the um, as my primo this week upgrade because I don't need around 12 player. Uh, I don't need around 14. Let's see, do I need around 14 player? Let's have a look. Round 14, how many did we need missing? We needed seven. How many, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven exactly. Um, so if by having seven, it means we're going to have 15 primos on fields, but we're going to sideways one or two of them. So we're going to, that's going to be 16 to 17 primos on field again. That They're huge numbers. Uh, last year, uh, I was struggling to have 14 primos on field. This time I'm going for 17. So these are big numbers. Uh, in round 15, all right, let's go to round 15. All right, what was our plan? We wanted to have seven primos missing. Well, we got Dacos and Dale, that's two. Bont and Crouch and McRae, so that's two, three, four, five, okay. Uh, that's it, we only got five because Wilson's already gone and Darcy will be gone. We have five primos missing. Uh, that gives us 18 primos on field. However, uh, I will have a Ruckman here, uh, most likely either English or um, or Marshall. So that'll be six missing. So by having six missing, I'll have 17 primos on field if I have 23 primos. So the plan is perfect. So this is, the, this is your guide, what you need. That's your numbers, okay? Now, if you've got one less primo on each line... Um, you're just going to have one less rookie or one less primo on field, okay? So the aim was for 20 primos. Now, let's work out our trades this week and, and if we can get the 20 primos. Now, we discussed before that we need to have around tw uh, 13 uh, buy player in our team, an extra one, okay? So uh, the round 13 buy is Port Adelaide and Frio, okay? So we need a Port Adelaide or Frio player. Uh, so we're going to trade out Wilson. Uh, Wilson... Some will say he's going to come handy for the buys. I don't need him. Okay, I need his cash more than him. Okay, so Wilson's out. Now, next up, uh, who else is going to go? Now, Powell, all right, has a break-even of 59, all right? Powell has the ability to score 90. Oh, we, we just saw it last week, all right? Uh, so Powell with 59 can score a 90. Uh, Clossy with a break even of 31, has a higher chance of scoring a 50 or even a 60, okay? So I'm, I'm better off keeping Powell this week and getting extra points from him. So Klossy's out, all right? Now, we're going to bring in uh, a rookie now. So we're going to bring in... Actually, let's do a change. We'll put McRae over there. And let's put Graham over there, all right? Uh, we're going to bring in uh, Butters... So Butters comes in, all right? We've got 127K. I can bring in the Collingwood boy, or I can bring in the Western Bulldogs boy, okay? Under three games, or under three games, players I can afford. I prefer the Bulldogs boy, Freya, okay? Freya. Uh, Freya's going to come in. I like the, the Magpies boy too, but I can't get both of them, okay? So I can only get one. Uh, so Freya it is. Uh, let's complete this trade. Okay. Now, uh, for round 12, all right, mind you, next week I'm going to have another Primo coming into the team. Okay, so I'm going to trade out Powell and possibly trade out um, somebody else. Okay, so I'm going to bring in another Primo next week. Now, let's go to round 12, all right. And let's count how many primos we have on field. Now, keep in mind, next week, actually, before we do round 12, all right, because uh, this is round 11, when we hit round 12, which is uh, next week, okay, uh, that's, that's breaking news for you, okay, when we hit round 12, uh, we, we aim to have 20 primos. Now, for me to have 20 primos, uh, I would have to tra do some trades. So next, next week, uh, Powell will go out, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to hold Darcy or not. So, so uh, maybe Powell and Darcy will go out. 
and I'll have to bring in somebody else. So I'll work it out next week. Uh, we have a lot of cash coming on the bench anyway. So we're, cash is not a problem this year, which is, un, which is unusual. So what we're going to do, uh, so let's pretend Powell, all right, is a primo because this is next week. Okay, and let's just keep the rookies we have on field now. So in round 12, all right, we said we need 20 primos, okay, and um, that will give us 16 primos on fields. So let's count them. Do we have 16 primos on fields? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, all right? Uh, Gorn is 13, Flanders is 14, McRae is 15, and Powell, who's going to be a primo, is 16. So we do have 16 primos on fields. So that plan is perfect. Now, what I forgot to mention uh, was when I trade out Powell, who do I bring in? Okay, because if I bring in a forward for Powell, uh, I can't get... Um, well, if I bring in a forward, who am I going to bring in for, for Powell? Because the only two forwards that I want now are Zorko and Rankin. So I can't bring in Zorko or Rankin. So... Who am I going to trade Powell out to, you may ask, okay? Because uh, everywhere else is full. So what am I going to do with Powell now, okay? You might be asking that question right now. Just come a down. Okay, well, here's the plan. Now, uh, let's go to players. Okay, let's go to players. In round next week, I'm going to pick up a bargain basement player. Um, it's going to be someone like, uh, let's go... It's going to be a midfielder, right? I need a midfielder next week. Let's go midfield, all right? Uh, the chances are I need to put Adelaide player because uh, if we go back to my team again, uh, we said we need four primos missing. I've only got three, all right? So I need one more here for round 13 to have four. Uh, so we're going to get another Port Adelaide player or a, or a Frio player. Uh, the chances are it's going to be a Port Adelaide player. And the, the chances are it's going to be Con Connor Rosie, all right? Now, Connor Rosie plays this week as a break-even of 157. Uh, he's going to lose 24K or 25K if he scores 100. Uh, so next week, we're going to pick up Connor Rosie for, for just under, um, if you go to his price, projected price, Connor Rosie was, is going to cost us roughly uh, about 496K. Uh, he may lose more the following week, but 10K, it doesn't matter now. We're just going to take it. So we're going to have the extra primo in Connor Rosie in our team uh, for next week. That's the plan. So uh, let's go back to our team. Let's just, for argument's sake, say that Garcia is Connor Rosie, all right? And, and Powell, we don't have any more, okay? So uh, round 12, all right, uh, Garcia comes in here. Where, where Green was. So it's the same thing. We had the right count anyway. So we had Powell out. Uh, we replaced with Darcy, but we're not going to do that. We're going to replace Green off the bench and put Connor Rosie there, all right? Uh, because I'm going to have nine premium midfielders next week, uh, not eight. So at, at the moment, you, you can see eight, okay? Uh, but I'm going to have nine. Now, I can hear questions coming, okay? Now, uh, the, the first question you're asking me now is, why do I want nine midfielders when I've only got four premium forwards? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Uh, what's the point of having uh, not nine mids, nine primo mids, and four primo forwards uh, when I can have another primo forward? Well, the, the, the problem is, okay, in round 12, the... the forward that I want is not playing, and that's Zorko, and also the other forward that I want, which is Rankin, is injured, okay, and the other two that I want, so there's no point getting a forward, however, if you look at round 15, we, we, we're aiming for 23 primos, so uh, the spare primo is going to be in this midfield here, uh, that's always the plan, so that's why we're going to get uh, our n ninth primo midfielder, and that primo midfielder is going to switch between the buy rounds. So, for example, uh, let's go to buy rounds, okay. Um, so, in round 12, for example, we, we, we're pretending that Garcia now, okay, is, uh, is, is our primo. So, Garcia will come here and replace Green. So, we're full primo in round 12 in the midfield. 
uh, in round 13, all right, let's go round 13, all right, well, the problem here is uh, our, our, mid, our primo here has the buy round that week, all right, so he stays on a bench. We've got two missing, but our forward line, uh, it's still not too bad because in round 13, we're up to 21 primos. F uh, four of them are missing because Garcia's missing, okay? Well, it's not Garcia, but it's the other primo. So four are missing. Well, that's kind of rosy. Uh, so we have 17 primos on fields. Uh, so it's still okay. Now, in round 15, sorry, 14, all right, uh, Connor Rosie comes back on fields and replaces one of the primos, uh, which then means we can sideways trade the ones that we don't like, okay? Well, let's just say for now it's Martin. Let's just say there's only one that we don't like, all right? So we sideways trade one, and it gives us 16 primos on fields. Uh, 16 is very high. Uh, last year, we were at 14 um, primos on field. So 16 is a good number. Uh, now, and the same applies for round 15. Okay, if we go to round 15, now, that's Connor, Ro uh, put Raoul back there. Okay, well, Connor, that's Connor Rosie, but you can't see him now. So pretend Clark is Connor Rosie now. And so that in round 15, we've still covered the midfield with the extra primo. So it's it's important that the extra primo that you bring in, uh, in my case, uh, it's kind of rosy uh, because I, I need to have uh, four players missing in this round 13 by so they can all even up. That's why I've gone for the four. Uh, I only got three, so I need the fourth one. Uh, so that's the plan. So the myth about having a full bench playing uh it is true uh, if you haven't planned these buy rounds properly, uh, so you can have extra warm bodies on the, on the field. But if you've planned it to perfection, uh, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, okay? Just come a deal! Okay, but we have been planning this. Uh, so if we've planned it uh, the way we want it, uh, it works out perfect. You don't actually need the uh, rookies. You only need two of them. Well, you're going to need more than two because the fact is some of them have the buy rounds. But during these... By rounds, you're always going to pick up one one uh, that's a new, a new uh, rookie anyway. There's always a new one coming through. So you're always going to have at least one or two uh, that are on the bench that can play. So the primo count is very important. And and that's why I've always gone one up and one down. And now, the added advantage I've got, which is why I wanted to keep Conway and Sweet, was, was because I get um, a rookie that can score like a primo. Uh, for a few weeks. That's why I wanted Conway, that's why I wanted Sweet to play on field. That's why I didn't want to bring in a Ruckman. I wanted to have Sweet here. Uh, I even took a donut for, for this to happen. So uh, it works out in the long run better for me, even though I took the, the, the hit uh, two weeks ago with that donut. Uh, in the long run, it's going to work out. That's a plan. Now, let's, for argument's sake, say that um, we didn't bring in Butters this week, all right? But instead, we brought in Zach Merritt. I mean, uh, Zach Merritt's playing in Richmond, so he's going to probably score more than Butters, okay? So uh, why, why would I bring in Butters when I know that Zach Merritt's going to score more, okay? He might go he might go 200, okay? And Butters might get tagged. So why, why would I even bother uh, bringing in Butters when I can bring in Merritt, okay? Let's complete this trade. Uh, what happens is my buy-round structures are messed up um, big time uh, because... In round 14, uh, instead of having um, seven primos missing, I have eight primos missing, which then means I have 14 primos on field, which then means I need to um, play four rookies or sideways trade uh, a lot more than two players. So I need to have this at 15 so I can sideways trade one or two. Uh, it is, it's vital. I can't pass more than seven in round 14. That's why, I'm, that's why I got Zach Merritt there. I mean, that's why I got Butters there. Now, you may say, uh, looking at your team, that you don't have 20 primos. Uh, you have 18 primos, for example. Okay, you, you only have 18. Okay, well, that's not, that's not too bad still. Okay, just come it down. Okay, now, if you've got 18 primos, uh, all these numbers, uh, you still got to keep these numbers here. Missing, 4477, seven, okay? Uh, that would then mean that you're going to have 14 primos on fields in round uh, 
uh, round 12, which then means you need to have more rookies, okay? Um, you've got to find more rookies. That's when rookies are important, okay? So you need four, You need to find four rookies to put on fields. Um, th- that was the advantage of, of me going up and down all year. If you notice, just take note, all year, I didn't stop going up and down, one up, one down, all year. Uh, even when Crouch missed a game, okay, he was injured or something happened, or he was suspended, uh, I didn't trade him out. I still wanted to continue one up and one down. And then when he came back, I was, I was back to my count again. Because this count of 20 now has the advantage now. Um, uh, the... The, the, you can't have more than 20. I don't, I, it's almost impossible because I tried. I couldn't get it. Uh, so your 20 count would be the, would, would be the max you'll get right now at, in round 12. And uh, if you've got 19, it's going to be hard for you to catch up uh, to 20. All right? I'm, I'm not saying that you're, you're going bad. Okay, I'm just saying uh, having 20 has benefits. That's why sideways trading uh, your primos um, after round 3 or 4 uh, is is a no no uh, because you ruin your whole structure of your team when you sideways trade after round four. You can sideways trade in round one, two, and three because you're not bringing in any primos. You're adjusting your team. That's not a problem. But once you hit round four and round five, and uh, when your upgrade season starts, uh, you just got to keep upgrading. You don't stop. Okay, so uh, that's it's a, probably a lesson for those of you that have seventeen primos now. Uh, next year. Uh, keep upgrading. Don't stop. Sideways trade your primos out during the buy rounds. Okay, that's why we're saying in round 14, we can now start sideways trading, even round 15. Uh, we can get rid of the ones we don't like. But make sure the ones you pick that have the round 12 and round 13 buys, you can't sideways trade them out. So they have to stay. You can only sideways trade the 14 and 15 out. So make sure you pick the good ones. For 12 and 13. That's why I, I minimized 12 and 13. I just want to make sure I get the, had the right ones. Well, we've come towards the end of the episode, and I hope I didn't cause too much confusion for everybody, okay? Uh, I apologize if I did, but um, uh, this is that was pretty much my, my f- thought process for the entire buy rounds uh, during the start of the season, preparing for this weekend, uh, because it's going to make a huge difference. Now, what we're aiming for, or in the buy rounds, all right? This is the aim now. We want 8,000 points. Okay, that's that's the objective, 8,000 points. Uh, that That's 2,000 points per week, all right, with the buy rounds. Now, this year, it seems for some reason a little bit easier than most other years, okay? Uh, in, in previous years, reaching 1,800 uh, was 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 a big task, okay? I think reaching 2,000 should be easy. Uh, not not too easy, but I'm not, I'm not trying to say, look, look at me, I could get 2,000. But no, 2,000 is the goal, okay? I really want 2,100 every week to get to 8,400 because uh, 8,400, uh, what does 200 points do, okay? Let's have a look. Now, how many points do we have now? Let's have a look. Let's go all the way down. Actually, we're, we're about here somewhere. Uh, we have 22,137, all right? Now, if we were to get, all right, a bonus of 200 points, uh, that puts us at 22,337, all right? 22,337, roughly around about top top five. Okay, that's top ten. Uh, that's, how, that's how much these buy rounds mean, all right? The extra 200 points. Just getting an extra... 2,100 points, or, or 2,000 points or 2,100 points, that's 400 points extra. Uh, these buy rounds are massive, all right? Let's, let's go all the way down, all right? Let's go all the way down to a team uh, ranked, uh, overall ranking. Okay, let's go right down. Okay, our, our group has got so many high-ranking teams. We, we got uh, we got over 100 teams and ranked in the top, top 10,000. Or top 1,000. I want to find a team ranked about 5,000, all right? All right. Let's say you're ranked at 1,500, okay? Like a caddy on his. He's got 2,000, he's got 21,845 points. Now, if a team had uh, 
200 points less. So 21,645. Where are they ranked? Okay, 21,645. You can see uh, the rankings now go high. 21,768. And uh, my, my team can't keep up. We're up to 2,500 now. 21,730. We've still got to go find another 100. 21. Um, you can keep going down. All right. So virtually, you can fly from top 3,000, top 4,000 into top 1,000 by just gaining an extra 200 points in these buy rounds. Absolutely vital. Okay. So good luck, everyone, with your buy rounds. Let's hope you can all hit um, between uh, 8,000 and 8,400 points during these four rounds. Anyway, uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for joining, and remember one thing. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Ciao for now. That's all, folks.